an artist trading card using the Bohemian Bazaar um, papers from Graphic 45 and I love these papers they're really vibrant and <clears throat> juicy and I don't know they remind me of candy they're so really really just like saturated colors and they're gorgeous um, but yeah so let's make um, an artist trading card together now if you're not familiar with artist trading cards or ATCs as they are known they are this size so an artist trading card always measures two and a half by three and a half inches um, you can buy blanks like this um, I like to buy blanks because then I don't have to worry about measuring because I'm lazy like that but you can buy these blanks um, I got mine from alphastamps.com um, they're really handy anyway um, so or you can cut one out yourself from a piece of cardboard or whatever so I'm going to be using the blank there and um, one of the things that the pa these papers from Bohemian Bazaar remind me of are beautiful um, Hindu um, imagery of gods and goddesses. So I'm going to be doing uh, my trading card as a sort of homage to um, Lakshmi, who is the Indian goddess of good luck and wealth and prosperity. Um, prosperity, both material and spiritual. But she's kind of cool. But I really love the um, the vibrancy of these images. And I should say that this image I took from a painting by, and I know I'm going to mess up this name, but his name is uh, Raja Ravi Varma. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And I apologize if I've totally butchered it. But it's a beautiful, beautiful painting. So I've taken her. So anyway, let's start off. Um, I'm going to use rubber cement. And I'm using Elmer's rubber cement here. I think there's a few different companies that make it. Um, this is just what I happen to have on hand. If you've never used rubber cement before, it's very stinky. It is flammable. It is an, irrit an irritant and um, yeah, but it's, I don't know, it's kind of old school. <laughs> it's what I used during um, when I was in design school and stuff like that. And I've just come to really appreciate um, how easy and fast and effective it is. And I'm going to show you how to use it. So I'm going to take my blank and I'm going to take this which is um, the opulent sunset um, paper from the Bohemian Bazaar collection. Now what I want to do is um, this is the side that I want to show so I'm going to turn that upside down and I'm going to take the rubber cement and it comes with a built-in brush and I'm going to cover the entire face of this side and you don't need to you just need really a thin sort of layer so I can move some of the stuff that I've glopped onto there onto here <clears throat> pardon me I have a cold so if I I've been sick for a couple of weeks so if I'm coughing and sniffling you'll have to excuse me and you'll see I'm going right to the edge here there we go <coughs> excuse me I'm going to allow this to dry for a few seconds. And actually, while that's drying, um, I've cut out another piece. And this is from, this is Bohemian Bazaar from Bohemian Bazaar. And I'm going to, um, this is going to be applied to the back of the card. 
because I like to have my projects totally finished. Um, so I'm just going to cover this as well. Now, I know it looks a bit messy. One really good thing, great thing about rubber cement is that it does clean up pretty easily. It basically it sticks to itself. So this is sort of dried a little bit. This is why you want to put a really thin layer on so that you don't have to do so much waiting around. And here we go. So what you want to do is line up your edges quite carefully because it will stick. See, it's already sticking to itself. And just, oops, this upside down thing isn't working for me. Okay, there we go. Um, just apply it and press it down. If you have one, you can use um, a burnishing tool. Um, if not, you just use your fingers, it's okay. And the bond is pretty, um, pretty much instant. You can take it apart, but it's sort of messy. You don't really want to do that. So again, I'm just sort of trying to make sure I get a thin layer here for the back of my card. I'm let that dry for a second. And I'll have a sip of my tea while I'm waiting there. And then I'm just going to apply this right on there. And there we go. So there's the base of our card. The really, really nice thing about rubber cement is that it, the, your paper will not buckle or curl up or wrinkle. It'll pretty much stay just like that. Um, what I do next is I'm going to take some sand paper or in this case the my sanding block and I'm just going to sand the edges. You could cut them too but um, I'm just going to do this just to make sure that everything is even Steven. Like I said, I like to make sure that I think it's important that you pay attention to the small details in your work to give it a, a finished look. So this just makes sure everything is crisp and even and if you wanted to I mean you could cut your paper just slightly bigger and then trim it down okay I'm, I'm if you're really really careful you could obviously get everything perfect laying it down but well I am far from perfect so I have to sand it up afterwards I do have a trim that's going on my edges, so I'm not too worried about about them. But I do want to, to make sure I have a good base, a good foundation for, for the work I'm going to put on top. So there we go. Now, when I said before that cleanup is pretty easy, the rubber cement sticks to, to itself, so you can easily rub it off, and it generally just sticks to itself. You can just clean that right out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so now I have some pieces that I want to, uh, I'm going to apply on top of that. Now this piece is from um, Opulent Sunset. And what I've done is taken one of the, um, the, the pockets from the Bohemian Bazaar Tags and Pockets set and used it as a template because the the pocket's a little bit too big for what I want to do here. So I've just used that as a template to get this really nice scalloped edge. And I'm darkening up my edges here using just an old stamp pad. And to get into these little corners there, you can see I've just used my finger and gotten right in there. Um, 
I like using my hands when I'm making stuff. I think it's it's important to really feel connected to the things that you're making. And really, it's fun to be messy. So, and this I made this actually a little bit too long, so I'm going to be cutting off the bottom part there. So there we go, there's that. And I also have, I've cut out um, a circle from, um, again, this is the, the back side of the Bohemian Bazaar, Bohemian Bazaar. Now, some people might like, um, like things to be absolutely perfect. I personally like to see little smudges and things like that because I think that it shows the handmade quality of the things that you're making. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, and then this piece is from, has been cut out from the back, or sorry, from the front of the Bohemian Bazaar uh, paper. So, what I'm going to do now is, maybe I will darken up the edges of this a little bit. Um, I'm going to cover them, but I don't know. Oh, I'll do the back too and rub the edges as well. I like old stuff, so I don't know, I guess the roughing up those edges sort of maybe gives it a, a not so new feeling. Okay, so there we go. Now, for the assembly. Um, I'm going to put this right about there. And I think to apply this, oops, sorry about that. Um, to apply this, I'm going to use some score tape. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, I will. And I really like this score tape. I'd never used it before, but I find it incredibly easy to use and really super handy. And I just like it a lot. And it's not messy at all, which for me is a big deal because, well, my place is a pigsty. So what I'm going to do is just, I noticed that I went a little bit too far there with my tape, so I'm just going to cut that right off. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to take the backing off. And score tape comes in all sort of widths as well. So for teeny tiny trims, holy cow, does it make things easy and ribbons usually when I use ribbon or when I have used ribbon in the past the I've used glue or some type of adhesive and it never fails it just always comes through so I'm going to apply that down like that and I'm just going to trim off this bottom part this is one of my sneaky things that I do all the time is that I actually go in and trim things up rather than having to measure them out because again I'm lazy like that and I'll just oops, do that quickly <clears throat> there we go so now I'm going to place this yellow circle on top just for a bit of contrast and again, I will use some of this fantastic score tape.
And I don't know, I really like doing that black edging because I think it really makes the contrasting things pop. So now I'm gonna put my picture of, of Lakshmi in the center there. And I'm going to use the thinner paper so that I can get right up to the tippy part of her head. There's all sorts of really cool, very interesting um, Hindu deities. Um, and the imagery is just fantastic. It's so vibrant and interesting and intricate and full of pattern and color. <clears throat> and it's fun to learn about other people's you know, cultures and and belief systems and whatever. And it's, you know, this is, I do it with complete respect because I think it's interesting and I want to learn more about it, not because, you know, I don't know. I'm not trying to, like, be namby-pamby about it. You know, I really do have an interest in in um, the culture and the meaning behind the symbolism and stuff like that. It's really cool. So I'm just going to place her right there. My last piece is going to go over top. I'm just going to trim this bottom piece off here because you're not going to see that. Now, I'm going to place this right here. And I should say that there's other ima uh, imagery that does go with, um, with Lakshmi. There's, she often has two elephants um, that uh, flank her on either side in, in imagery of her. Not this one. Well, not this one, now that it's cut out. But... And different gods and goddesses have different colors, too, that are associated with them. It's really, really fascinating stuff. And quite beautiful. So um, that's all prepared and ready to go. And that's going to go on top of there. This is some beautiful blue uh, flower from Petaloo. But first, I'm going to put some gold um, Dresden trim around of this piece. And I love Dresden trim. So, and I think for this I will use the, the sticky stuff too. Oops, I want to get it away from me. No, don't go over there. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay. Bit of my laziness again, rather than Measuring, just cut it when, where you need it. Um, actually, that's a lie. It's not entirely laziness. Some of it, um, I started actually doing that cutting as I was going because sometimes, not always, but sometimes um, when you create things visually, things don't line up. Um, 
So even though you might measure it a bazillion times, sometimes it just doesn't look right. So I started, you know, cutting as if I could, I would cut as I went. Um, Cause it made things easier. I mean, it, I, if you do things to sight, it's, I don't know. I just find that I found, find it a really helpful sort of trick, I suppose. That's not to say that you shouldn't measure um, things out. Because like I said, the, the trading cards have to be a specific size. Um, but it's just something that perhaps uh, saves a little bit of aggravation. So I'm going to put this other side down here making sure that the two sides are similar. The points sort of show at the same spot. Give it a little snip. And then this should fit nicely at the top. I'm going to trim this tiny little piece off here. Oops. There we go. And then this part. There we go. Now, <coughs> I'm actually going to cover up the lotus flower at the bottom. Um, but I'm keeping it there. I'm just going to, I'm adding some embellishments on top of that. So again, I will take out, oh, I've already done this one. Come on, here we go. And then I'm going to add that right there. These flowers from Petaloo are, they are just absolutely divine. They are so nice. Holy cow. There go. They're so pretty and soft and just lovely. So there we go. There is my little homage to Lakshmi the Indian goddess of good luck and wealth. Actually, I lied. There's one more thing. Actually, there's two more things. Um, Lakshmi has one of the, um, the pieces of imagery that goes along with her is that she has gold coins coming from her hand. So I'm just going to add a little bit of, do this. I'm going to have her tossing some gold. I've got some gold glitter here. And honestly, I love glitter. Holy cow. I know it's kind of, it's probably a bit dorky. And I know people say it's like the herpes of the crafting world. But come on, it's glitter. So I'll let that set. Um, and the thing that I want to add last is a tag at the back so I have this sheet that I've created um, that will be available for you to download and I'm just gonna cut out one of these little tags here um, <clears throat> and this is so you can add your name and title and um, the number of pieces because um, sometimes what you do is when you create uh, artist trading cards you might create a series of them or um, an addition of them so you might make 20 different ones all at the same time and I have no pen but I will get a pen and be right back 
Okay, I'm back. So, um, I'm going to put the title of my piece, and you'll excuse me for not writing upside down. Um, and I don't want to pronounce, or sorry, to write her name incorrectly. Lakshmi, and this is number one of one. And today's date, which is June 29th, I believe, and created by me, Nicola. And I have I've put an extra line at the bottom here. Um, so if you want to put your email address, some people like to put contact information on there their cards or you know if you want to put your proper signature which is very fancy and because I am quite fancy la -de da <laughs> I will I'm gonna put my signature there to make it all official so let me just tap this out um, I'm going to add this to the back of my trading card and I'm going to use the rubber cement again because it's my good old standby. And there she is, all ready to trade.